Hey there, everybody. Marshall 110 here, back again with... Well, I'm sure you know. Oh, gonna need some water for this one. Okay. So, this is gonna be a little bit emotional for me. And that rhymed. Other than playthroughs and walkthroughs, you guys know that I have a pretty damn good collection. Um, basically Nintendo. And a lot of items I've shown to be rare. Tanuki Statue, Factory Sealed GameCube, you know, like you see there, for example. Um, you know, I got the uh, Wind Waker HD box there. The Char's Wavebird, which is a bit off screen, but I've already told you that. And, you know, some rare amiibo. Well, a lot of rare amiibo. Limited editions, collector's editions, you know, everything under the sun. But what I'm about to show you next is probably, at least in my opinion, the most rare item that I have ever collected in the history of my career of collecting. Um, like I said, it will be emotional. Um, I don't know how. I got this, like, in the sense that it technically shouldn't exist. But without further ado, let's actually get it on screen. We're about, oh, like, almost two minutes in. So let's just get this in the shot as best as we can, or as best we can. I don't know. I'm going to fumble around with my words just a bit, just because the sheer magnitude of this. Okay get started. So let's take a look at this box here. Um, see if we can get this focused or focused. I don't know, focused. It says here Kirby's Adventure, French version, Nintendo Entertainment System, six pieces, Nintendo, Nintendo of Canada. I think that says like limited, or I don't know. Made in Japan and then the youth PC code. And uh, Canada. So, the best way that I can explain this without going off, you know, off track, I just gotta say what it is, right? Um, this is nothing shy of a factory sealed shipping crate of Kirby's Adventure on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And, you know, on a side note before I continue, I really, really, really dislike how on some videos and, you know, like on some on some listings or whatever. Someone calls it, like, say if they're showing a game of this console, they say, the Nintendo NES. And then I'm like, you do realize that the N in NES means Nintendo. So you're saying Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> it's stupid. Like, you might as well just take the N out of there and just put ES. It's, it's stupid. It really, really is. So I'm actually calling it Nintendo Entertainment System or NES. Not Nintendo NES. It's, it's really dumb. Um, but yes, as you can see, this is a factory sealed shipping crate of the game. Um, it released in, I think, the 1st of May in the year 1993. So it was a bit after the Nintendo Entertainment System um, was done, or I don't know how to say it, like the technical term, like how it's, like it, it was finished, like it's, like it's, it's the predecessor of the Super Nintendo, and there was a new system that came out, however you say it. Like I said, I'm going to sound confused and just jumbled with my words just because what's, what's in front of me is just that crazy. Um, now you may be thinking to yourself, oh, really? Come on, that can't be a factory sealed shipping crate of it. Like I said, um, it technically shouldn't exist. This is going to be 22 years old um, within a matter of a couple weeks from now at the time of this video. May 1st, 1993 to May 1st of 2015. So this crate right here is going to be 22 years old, like I said, in a matter of a couple weeks. Um, 
it's quite crazy. Like, like I said, it shouldn't even exist. Um, this survived. It's maintained. Like, it, like it's, it's been maintained for that long. Um, I don't know how. I really don't understand how something like this can be preserved. I don't. And I guess I'm just rambling on. So actually what I'm going to be doing is for reference, you know, just because I can, right? Um, I actually have right here a modern day box. So for now, let's put that to the side. Or it's like to the very end there, just because I have enough room. This is an, this is actually an amiibo box. Um, basically, these things, if you're curious to how they ship these, um, they come in fours, and um, that's the carrier that they use, I, I believe. Just, I don't know how that works. And then there's the, there's the barcode for actually scanning them into the system to sell on store shelves, all that great stuff. And if you notice, oop, give you guys a bump there. Sorry about that. Let's get you back in. However, uh, it was before. As you can see, it's generally the same exact stuff. Uh, the reason why this box is faded, well, I'm sure you can understand why, <laughs> compared to this. As you can see, it's. How many times have I said it? As you can see. As you can see. <laughs> It's the same basic design. They're pretty much using the same exact boxes and the same exact tape. The only difference is that it doesn't say um, if seal is broken, check contents before accepting. This part is ripped, but you can make that out. Check contents before accepting. Um, I guess nowadays they, you know, they don't do that. So this is an amiibo box, factory sealed, and. What we're actually going to do here is get an open one, just to kind of show you what's inside. I could probably make this another video if I wanted to, but nah, I'm not going to do that. So we're going to open this baby up. Takes a bit. Come on, there you go. Um, this specific one is Mega Man. So how Amiibo are packaged? Come on, lid, stay open. <laughs> kind of looks like an NES right there, a little bit, huh? I don't know. So, yeah, how Amiibo are packaged, um, like I said, they come in fours. Um, this particular one is Mega Man. So you take one out, and as you can see, there I go again, there's like tissue paper inside just to kind of keep it all neat. So nothing kind of rubs together. Um, it's kind of out of the way a bit. So not exactly. <laughs> the tissue paper is kind of ruffled around in the box, so it, it, it's not going to fulfill its purpose now, but it's just, it's sitting in my house, so it's fine. So, that's actually how Amiibo come in. Dang, you got in the way again. This thing is misbehaving, come on, close up, you. There you go. So, that's how that works. Just to, just to show it, right? What the hey? I got one, so I might as well. There's a bit of trivia for you guys, just for the heck of it. You know, just for reference. How they use the boxes then and how they use the boxes now. Still the same, but like I said, this is faded because of, you know what. So, it's definitely a factory sealed shipping crate of Kirby's Adventure. It's been maintained for 22 years. Um, and for even more evidence to show that this is legitimate, what I have right here are one of my copies of F-Zero. Now, N Nintendo Entertainment System games and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System games, th they're basically the same box. The only difference is that one was horizontal and one was vertical. The vertical ones were the NES, horizontal ones, as you can see, Super Nintendo. And that's actually how NES games were packaged, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up, and we're going to take this and this, this whole side here, put it on, and as you can see, it is a perfect fit on how it would go in the case. So, there you go, my friends. Um, you know, it 
This is definitely an amazing, amazing collector piece. Um, I hope I did good making this video. I hope it, I hope it didn't sound too crazy or anything. You know, I, I thought I was descriptive. I thought it was good to give you some reference points on other boxes. Oh, I feel proud of myself. I feel proud of myself on getting this damn thing. Um, I guess before I close the video and, you know, stop... Um, like I said, I think it's the most rare, like the most rare piece of my collection that I've ever gotten, like I said in the beginning. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, uh, I guess I'll mention this. You know, you, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, that must be the only one in the entire world that exists. Well, yes and no. There is actually a box of this somewhere else in the world. Um, I imagine there's two or three in total. This is one of them. Now, what I mean by yes or no, that there's more. Um, this particular one, as I've made a big deal of, is factory sealed. Other than that little part. So, you can hear the sticky... Uh, the residue there. That's the only part that's a bit open, but you know, that's how it was probably shipped in the beginning in 93. Um, oh God, it feels so weird to say that. Um, there are more in the world, probably like one or two other than the, like other than this, I was going to say these. Um, but the other one that I have seen is actually already opened. So what I mean by is there another one in the world? Yes, in the sense that there is a crate of these and the games are inside, sealed. But no, exactly, in terms of it actually being 100% factory sealed. The other one in the world is actually opened, but the games are still mint, whereas this one is just 100% sealed, done. Like it's a done deal. So... Right here, you know, it's it's definitely an amazing, amazing collector piece. Um, I want to get people's opinion right before I cut this off. What I'm thinking personally is that I shouldn't open this box. You know, it's been maintained for this long. You know, I think I should continue the tradition. Um, you know, it's been carried down to me now. Um, I think I should respect the product and not dishonor it by keeping it sealed. It was definitely a lot of money to pay, but it's the least I could pay for something like this of this quality. It's, I couldn't even imagine getting something like this in my life. Rather like factory sealed game cubes or a fixture that's in front of me, stuff like that. But I didn't dare dream of having something like this. I guess what I'm asking is, should I open this crate and look inside to actually see all of those copies mint condition or should I actually keep this box sealed and just never ever open it to maintain its value because what I'm thinking is this is the only one in the entire world that's actually still sealed like I said there like there is another box or two but you know that's opened you know those are opened whereas this one is not it could be the only one in the world that's sealed so what do you think I should do with this? Should I keep this baby sealed? Or should I crack it open and have a look at all the stuff inside? I mean, I know what it looks like inside. It's 100% sealed games. You know, the shrink wrap is is tight on there. There's tight corners and everything. Um, this, you know, it, it's not as good, or like this isn't as good as what's in there. You can like kind of notice that the box here is misshapen. Um, there is a hole there. If you can see that, like near the light, there is a little bit of a hole. Um, the actual seam, some of it is actually tearing off because it's so old. So it's not quite as good as that, obviously, as that. So I guess that's it for now. Um, I wouldn't ever have dreamed to have this 
it's a huge deal to me. I'm so happy that I have it. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that I could definitely share the, uh, this experience with you guys because something like this is definitely something that I never imagined to have. So I guess with that, I'll be seeing you in the next What I've Picked Up video, whenever that is. But I can honestly tell you for a fact, it will not be as good as this. It won't. Oh, I'm done talking. See you guys next time. Who's Kirby? Behind the flabby facade, a physical powerhouse, a street fighter, a weapons expert. He's whatever the situation demands. In Kirby's adventure, evil King Didi stolen Dreamland's dreams. Now Kirby's fighting to get him back, level by nightmarish level. That's Kirby. He's cute. Till you cross him, then he's one tough cream puff. Kirby's adventure on NES.